Next call for him is from Biloxi, Mississippi. Liberal line. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Morning. Uh, I wanted to call. I wanted to ask you a couple of things about uh, as far as uh, legislation toward the Constitution. One was about Kosovo. Why in the world do we keep sticking our noses in places we don't belong? Is the first question. And the second question, uh, after hearing your last caller about the drug issue, uh, I'm a libertarian. I called on a liberal line because they don't really have anything uh, that matches us uh, exactly. <laughs> they need a libertarian line, don't they? <laughs> yes, they do. Uh, and, and another question I wanted to ask you is what happened at Waco? We heard all during the hearings with uh, Clinton about him obstructing justice, and he probably did to a certain extent. Uh, being a libertarian, I don't believe it should have ever got that far. But the point I wanted to make about Waco, when you have Texas Rangers coming on TV and saying the FBI bulldozed the crime scene and in effect obstructed justice, but I never heard anybody in Congress say anything about this, I'm going to hang up and listen no. to the answer. Well, I think uh, I wasn't here at the time the hearings were going on, but I do believe some members of uh, the Congress did uh, talk out about the problems with investigating uh, Waco. Uh, there were some hearings, but uh, obviously not very satisfactory as far as I'm concerned because I don't think we know the full story there. It certainly is a real tragedy. Uh, again, this is a perfect example of out-of-control law enforcement from the federal level. This should have been handled at a local level. It had nothing to do with the federal government and uh, uh, under, the, under the Constitution. So that should have never happened, would never have happened if we had constitutional government. This would have been a local law enforcement matter and we wouldn't have had Air Force helicopters in there and poisoning gases and, and the whole thing. You already spoke to your point of view on Kosovo and drug issues, so I'm going to move on. Okay. Uh, Victoria Falls, Texas on our conservative line. Good morning. Caller, are you there? Yes, I am. You're on the I'm air. TV down. Um, I am. Um, am I on? You are. Welcome. Thank you. Um, uh, I'm real nervous. Ron Paul is my um, representative, and we are so proud of him down here. And I am so excited to <laughs> be on. The, a couple of things I'd like to ask him about. One is the, re the Cox report. Uh, Chris Cox and... Um, I can't remember the guy's first name, but his last name is Dix, uh, made a report about the China business. And the White House has been trying to keep it um, secret until this Cox um, uh, committee goes out of business in April. And I would like to know, is there any way that the Congress can actually make this public, or at least make enough of it public to where the public understands what happened? And also, another thing I'd like to know about is um, the uh, independent counsel uh, statute. I would like to know what his views are about that, because myself, I believe that people with as much power as the president has, we really need someone who has at least the authority to investigate him, and obviously the Justice Department is not going to do it. I'm going to hang up and listen to what he says. Thank you. Thanks. The Cox Report is the report referenced in this New York Times right. story. And they write, last December, a bipartisan committee unanimously approved a voluminous report concluding that China had harmed national security uh, during the last 20 years by stealing nuclear secrets and acquiring other American technology. Since then, the committee and the White House have been quietly negotiating about how much of the report could be released. And, and it is an ongoing discussion, and I keep thinking any day now we may have a vote on the House floor, which would be a secret vote in order to release this information. I'm all for it. Would you like to see all of it? I'd, I'd release it all. I want to know what's going on, and I'd, I think the American people deserve to know what's going on. And uh, I, I just think that uh, we have too many secrets. I don't believe the CIA should be running around the world uh, uh, sabotaging different regimes anyway. So if there's information like that, bring it out. Let us know. So the more the merrier. On the uh, special counsel law, uh, I understand her point that we have to have a way of, uh, of oversight for the president, but the Constitution allows for it without a special counsel. And that has to do with the Congress. Uh, Nixon was investigated and, uh, and put out of office without a special counsel. The Congress has to assume its responsibility. It can, uh, uh, you know, review and oversight and check in to any of these areas, and uh, therefore I will not be
be a sponsor or supporter of continuing with the special counsel law, but I would be uh, urging the Congress to do more, such as the Cox report. This is a way to find out what the administration is going. We need to do more of that. Vienna, Virginia, next. Moderate line. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad to see that there are more physicians um, in Washington these days. Um, my comment, I've got a comment and a question. Yesterday there was a commentary in the Washington Post called The Wrong Rx. It was by Sandra Feldman. Um, and she made the comment, despite how well it works, the free market model is not a good fit for health care or education. My comment is... We expect health care to work as a free market, but we leave out two important features of what you need for a free market to work, and that's information on price or how much the services that you are receiving are before you get them or the products that you use are before you get them, and information on who the real high-quality providers are. There is a difference in the level of quality that's provided out there, as I'm sure you know. My question is, um, is the patient protection legislation in Congress um, today, the several um, different versions of it, just a way to maintain the independent contractor status of physicians and not really a way to bring accountability to the health care system? And again, I want to thank you for the opportunity, and this is a great show. Thank you. Uh, I, no, I don't think the... Uh uh, bills in Congress would protect the independent status of the physician. Uh, that's long gone. Oh, nor the privacy of the patient. The privacy of the patient and the choice of the patient, that's long gone. I think everything that has happened uh, for the last 20 or 30 years has moved us in the direction of managed care, managed corporate care. We don't have socialized medicine. We sort of have corporatism or a fascist system of medicine because Patients don't have choices. There is no pricing structure. Uh, there's first uh, a third-party payment from insurances and government. Prices go too high. Then they have to ration care and have price fixing. So we have an absolute out-of-control managed care system. It's going to get a lot worse. People are going to get a lot unhappier with medical care. And there's nothing wrong with arguing because I strongly believe that no matter what service we provide for anybody, it's better done in the free market than through a bureaucratic, mismanaged federal government. That's what we're suffering from. So a free market can work in education as well as in medicine. If you have to have some government, the more local the better. The more big government you have and the more centralized government you have, the more abuse and the more corruption. Providence, Rhode Island. Good morning. Liberal Line. Hi, I'm a big fan, and it's my first time caller. I have just two questions I'd like to ask the Honorable Congressman. And that is one, as far as the being a libertarian, how do you feel about the um, excesses of Ken Starr? I mean, Julie Hyatt Steele, this poor woman, I, I just can't believe how he has been running roughshod. And I just don't think it's, it, it's right. I think a lot of people feel that way. And... Number two, about the China Gate issues, I am not a big defender of Mr. Clinton, but you kind of have to be when you, you have the extreme right wing winding his head. And I'd just like to say that this happened in 88, that, that the uh, technologies have been stolen for 20 years, and we know that different countries, all countries, including ourselves, spy on each other. Now, I'm not saying this is a good thing. I didn't think that we, we shouldn't have... Maybe Mr. Clinton shouldn't have put it into the Commerce Department, not trade. And I wasn't a, a, a big uh, proponent of NAFTA. Anyways, I just don't understand. I seen Dana Rohrabacher last night on TV, a, a fellow representative from California, Republican, and he was just a, a firebrand, like yelling and screaming and saying, like, Clinton's basically... It's kind of like the, the extreme right-wing Republicans are trying to use the... To say Democrats equals communism, just the way Truman, when he fired MacArthur, it's been haunting the Democratic Party for years, and I, and I just don't think that's right. I think we should just work together and bipartisanship and, and try to clean up the, the, the fact that we have spies trying to, to uh, endanger our national security. Thank, Thank you, you Providence. Well, well, I think there's no doubt about it. It needs cleaning up, but I think the case can be made that it's a lot worse than it's been. Yes, yeah, some technology uh, went to China prior to Clinton, but I think, again, that has to do with our uh, uh, confusing way we do contracts with our, uh, our contractors that uh, build our military weapons. Uh, I think that uh, it, it is tremendously abused. We should find out about that. And if military technology has not been so sold but stolen... And then we find out that there's been tremendous donations made to the president during the uh, uh, presidential campaign. We, we really uh, can't ignore that. 
Livingston, Texas is next on our conservative line. Hello. Good morning, caller. Good morning. I'd like to talk to Mr. Ron Paul about Social Security, a problem that I'm having. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Paul, have you ever had, have you worked on the bill concerning the Notch babies? Uh, not directly. No, I have not. Uh, you you are familiar with it. Though. I am. Yes. I uh, I've just been really concerned about the unfair treatment that toward the Notch victims. It uh, seems like it's only fair that we should receive the same as all others. Now, my husband and I both are, uh, I was born in 26, he in 24, which makes us eligible for the increase. Also, the $5,000, I think they call it $5,000 lump sum notch settlement. Uh, could you kind of talk about that a little bit and see, um, see what we can do about it? Well... I, I can't talk a whole lot about it because I don't feel like I'm an expert on it, but I, the issue has been around a long time. There's been a lot of complaints. I have never seen any serious move here in the Congress to correct it. I do think, though, the issue of equity is something that we should uh, pay attention to. So anything that would be equitable uh, for everybody, uh, I think we should go ahead and do it. But unfortunately, I can't say, oh, yeah, this is something we're on the verge of dealing with because, uh, quite frankly, I I think that uh, there hasn't been a lot of momentum here to really bring that to the House floor. Well, she brings up the issue of Social Security. Have you decided your position on Social Security reform? Uh, yes, I've decided on that a long time ago because I've had my own my own ideas. Uh, but I don't know whether it would fit in completely and totally with you know the two or three things that are floating around on the Hill. I support strongly that the Social Security system be put off budget kept separate and that we not touch those funds. Therefore, the deficit, there would be no surplus because uh, last year the national debt went up $113 billion because we counted Social Security. So we ought to be honest with our budgeting. So I'd set all the trust funds aside, whether they're highway funds or whether it's Social Security. I would make sure that none of the income to a recipient is taxed. I would make sure that people don't have any limitations on their, their interns. And hopefully someday the ultimate goal would be to allow young people, if they don't think it's a good investment, to get out of the system. But but we're not quite there, but uh, at least we're on the verge of maybe setting it aside as a uh, special trust fund and that we not abuse it and we not doctor up the budget the way we do. Were you in this meeting yesterday where the leadership uh, talked about its budget plans for this session? No, I wasn't there. Uh, is there a reason why you weren't there? It, was, it says it's with the, uh, the House membership, Republican membership. Uh, I, I'm not quite sure why yeah. exactly. In, in this, it says that they sold their membership on a budget plan, and one of the things that it would do would uh, that uh, limits on discretionary spending would be adhered to, and that budget surpluses generated by Social Security taxes will not be tapped for tax cuts or extra spending. And the proposal also, I believe, is to move offline the Social Security. Yeah. And that was one of the first things that Livingston had said when he was about to be uh, Speaker, and I think that idea is a very good idea. I think it would be much more honest. Will it be successful in this Congress? I think if we can get past the demagoguing, you know, uh, about this and how it's so often politicized uh, and how the PR fight is won. But uh, I think the momentum is in that direction. Let me just ask you uh, generally to describe your relationship with the rest of the Republicans in the caucus. You are a libertarian, but a, a representative of the Republican Party from your district. Are you generally involved in the